last mail bag for the year and I've got a bunch of stuff. Let's see what we've got to look at. Memory card, brilliant. It's meant for this camera here. I'm currently using a 64 gigabyte card in this camera which was originally used in my Canon DSLR camera when I was using that for doing video. And the cat's found the box. So I'll we'll get one of these. Um, supposed to be slightly faster, not a lot in it. I'm already using quite a decent card but sometimes I run out of space on this card when recording video. 64 gig and sometimes I fill it up. So a couple of times I'm doing video, especially when I'm doing like live streams, I'm recording a lot of footage for a long period of time, not very condensed, you know, and I have to edit it down a lot more. But this one, at least I should never, should never run out of memory. Mm. I think there'll be links down below for things I'll give you links for too. I won't be able for that because that'd be local. Source locally, so. Super Slim Drive. Oh, right, okay. This is a. CD drive or DVD drive. How good the quality is, I don't know. It wasn't very expensive. I've already got one of these, but it's only got like a uh, USB A connector on it. This one's got a USB C as well. The reason I've got this is because my wife well, recently upgraded the computer she uses, and it's using now Windows 11, which has been interesting. And uh, that computer obviously has no CD drive, or no disk drive I should say, and so that's been more of a challenge. The old computer, she used to use it buy music, you know, CD, she'd go to op shops and stuff like that, and you know, buy CD for a dollar sort of thing, and then she'll copy that into a computer, then copy that onto her phone. So she's got music on the phone as well, and she used to do that quite a lot. The new computer doesn't have a drive. Even though it's plenty of space for a drive, well, anyway, bought an external drive so she can plug this into a computer and carry on using it the way she always has done. So it's got this fold out with it. Well, nothing is this. It's not. What it says? Is this instructions? <laughs> it's it's a bit rubbish, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Quality. Barcode scanner. What oh, do you got? A barcode scanner. Didn't buy a barcode scanner. I hope it's just a different box. Quality instructions screwed up in the bottom of the box now. Uh, user manual. Okay, well, what is it? Seriously, what the hell is this? Oh right, okay. It's one of those little printers. It's not quite the interface and stuff I was expecting to find. Good little printer. Okay, so it's got a USB port there. So you've got power here, doesn't say what it is. Oh my says nine volt yeah, five to nine volt there I suppose. TTO RS T32 and USB. So you can use any of these inputs to control the thing. Okay, and it gave you the cables. Yeah, what well, is the cables came with anyway? Uh, yeah, Let's see some insides. It's almost like this is meant to go inside something else, some other product. But you got some mounting brackets here, like some screws there, each side. And these are like the mounts, so it's like you do that screws and the mounts will slide out, so you drop it through an open hole in something and then mount it. Yeah, okay. There's some software. You install the software. What software? Where is the software? Print assistant, apparently. Uh, doesn't even give you a web address to find it at. It's like there's no URL. It says you install the software. Uh, okay, well, I got this because I thought it'd be curiosity because it wasn't very expensive, it was like 20 bucks or something, I think it was. Maybe 30 bucks, I can't remember. So I was just going to have to play around with. But might be useful. Might, you know, I, I did think of maybe there might be a function for this. There's a certain thing I was thinking I might use it for. Kind of need to figure out what this software is, this mystery software. <laughs> Project for later on, isn't it? Didn't look quite that um, dodgy before, especially when it says barcode scanner, it's obviously not a barcode scanner. Right. Okay, so two for here. So 
vent on cable, USB C to micro USB. Yep, see that end. Micro USB there, cool. Now, the question is why did I buy this? I had a particular function for this cable, I'm just trying to remember what I needed it for. Two hours later. Ah, right, number. I've got a charger in the bedroom which is used for the phone. It's got two ports on it. A USB-A which is used to charge the phone and a USB-C which is used to charge my tablet. The rare times I actually charge it because I don't tend to use it. I'll well, find it a bit big. But I've got some Bluetooth earphones what I use and they use a micro USB and I was thinking I could use this cable to charge that up because right now I bring it in here and I plug it into this cable to keep my desk here. It's a bit of a pain to have to keep it next to the bed. you know. And I thought well, I'll get one of these so I can convert it from USB-C to USB micro. So that's what we're there for. Nice. Battery charger. Okay, right. I've got this for the motorhome because I've all got I've got battery chargers here anyway in, in here. It's supposed to be able to do like pickle metal hydride and lithium and apparently. It's not a manual there. It's one of these. Let's plug in a USB C. And there we go. There's a display. So it's four independent channels. I don't know how good this is. There's been times I wish I had a battery charger in the motorhome and I've been using that. I've been out somewhere at an event or something. And the battery's been a little bit low on something. When we get home from being away, once I close the bus on the motorhome, I forget about anything inside the motorhome which needs addressing. It's just the way it is. So I'm going to put this in the motorhome and keep it in there. Less of an issue. And there's some information about it, and as well as another shot of the screen there. Look at the high drive, and I had 500 milliamps per, which is fine, or one amp by two. So if you're only using two, you can do one amp. Lithium ions. I've got some lithium ion batteries, and I've got some different high drives which I need to charge. So that's it. Nothing, nothing about any NICADs. I think it's either one or the other. So that'd be good for that. IMR. What's IMR? I'm familiar with that one. So I've got 8650s in there, and I've got some 2650s as well, so that's good, that'll fit too. I didn't check for that, didn't, didn't occur to me. Here's the screen. I'll be able to see more details. Right, I think it's going to be a long mailbag, because I'm <laughs> not even halfway through yet. Well, maybe I'm halfway. Apparently it's got some logins. Open. Oh, right, okay. Okay. Power cord. It's a network switch. People have been around here for a while will remember I did some upgrades to my network and I made it a 10 gigabit network. I've only done one switch and one section of my network so far because it's quite expensive to go to 10 gigabit. Like my NAS is 10 gigabit and stuff like that, so that's the important bit. Is I've got the computer, my main network of the computer's on, and the NAS all on 10 gig, so that is all working well. I got myself a, another little switch here, which goes literally onto the other side of the room where my wife's desk is, but she doesn't need 10 gigabit. I think she uses Wi Fi most of the time anyway, which wouldn't really likely be charged, you know, plugging straight into it. But that switch does a couple of things. I've got this switch because it's um, 2.5 gig managed switch, you've got 10 gigabit in here and 2.5 gig in these ones. So these are 2.5, those are 10. So I'm going to plug 10 into my main network and have 2.5 branching out from that. And that's fine, I can run 10 gig probably straight through, it might be 10 in and out, and then 2.5 branching off. So, but yeah, this is relatively cheap, which is why I got this one. But it's a managed switch as well, so you can actually do VLANs and stuff. VLANs are something I've never really played with. I've got I've had no equipment really to do VLANs, but I'm getting to the point now where I'm getting stuff which can do VLANs. They're good for doing security, so that apparently. Um, that's something I want to look into. If you've got experience doing VLANs, maybe comment down below to help me out, because I have no experience doing VLANs. And this could do VLANs, my main 10 gigabit switch, which I've got on my main network there. Can also do VLANs. I can't get that back in. Yeah, right. There you go. So my main 10 gigabit switch. I could do VLANs as well. I could do a VLAN between that switch and this switch, and that would actually segregate some of my network. Something to do. I could use some help. Well, that's annoying. I opened up a couple more packages, 
and I got out of sequence of my recording somehow and when I was pushing record I was actually pushing stop when I was pushing stop I was actually pushing record so I've got all this boring footage of me tidying up in between packages so I open this one up there's one other thing which I'm not going to bother going back to but this is important got a VIFO memory card here 256 gig memory card VIFO came with it and we've got this dual channel 4k dash cam so it's got a front and rear dash cam this is a Christmas present for my wife don't tell her should be getting this a couple of days time so chance of her seeing this video is pretty slim she doesn't tend to watch my videos so uh, I think we're safe so this is a Christmas present for her so uh, she already got a dash cam but it's really unreliable on paper it looks good the actual footage quality is okay it does some weird format though which I had trouble playing back yeah this is a dual channel 4k so I think it does 2k and 1k if you're doing both cameras or something I'm not quite sure or 4k to single and um, yeah this was not cheap VIFO actually do some nice stuff I've already got a VIFO one the same model as this just the front piece here I don't have that camera, I've only got this one in my car and the footage quality of that is excellent so recommended but not cheap cameras anyway so her one is unreliable what well, it tends to do I think it's something to do with time zones because before midday even though it says it's recording you go back in there to get the footage out nothing there camera's set correctly I've tried with and without GPS times tried manually setting the time at different time zones tried different time zones it just doesn't work properly before midday there's a good chance it won't record at least it won't save that footage or overwrites the footage or something with later footage from that same day some kind of weird bug I don't know what the hell is going on with that but you know so I've basically given up on that but it's not the best I can't remember what camera was now I probably did show in the mailbag previously I don't remember anyway so this is a camera for her to replace that one so she's getting this for Christmas I know it may be a bit of a sucky Christmas present but I know she really wants one remember don't tell her I should probably mention as well that DVD drive CD DVD drive that I showed before that's also for a Christmas present that's right I've got two things well I'm going to clean this mess up now have a good Christmas I'm going to be sitting at home getting drunk maybe we'll see I don't tend to drink so it's going to be hard but you will see links to watch down below there subscribe over here if you want to subscribe Patreon support link over there if you want to help me and support the channel to buy things for mailbag and bits and pieces and maybe some things my wife or maybe get us a, a better Christmas present than a dash cam mm. yeah maybe so